Everyone, welcome to Grow Your Own. This is by far the most fun you're ever going to have on TV, so stay glued. In this series, we explore the basic ideas of food gardening and the sustainable use of resources. In last week's episode, we explored how to plant a sustainable permaculture garden. Today we're going to look at how to rehabilitate and nurture your soil. Good quality soil is of vital importance as it will affect the nutrient content of your fresh produce. Hello there friends, my name is Rabi Tlabiani and today the Grow Your Own team is going to show you how to prepare your soil so that you may have a healthy vegetable garden. Fertile, well-drained soil is necessary for a successful garden. What's not so important, however, is the type of soil that you'll be needing. Your soil just needs to be well-drained, well-supplied with organic matter, free of stones and moisture retentive. The sooner you can get outdoors to work on your soil, the better. A big part in learning how to maintain a healthy vegetable garden is in figuring out how to create an environment that will allow your plants the opportunity to thrive. This is done by soil preparation. You can begin by using these funky looking soil testers to determine what substances and nutrients are lacking. If your soil is lacking in good material, you can choose to have a raised bed which is filled with ready-made soil that you can get from your local nursery. Or if you prefer, you can choose to add the necessary substances such as peat, organic matter and organic fertilizer. I've got a bag of manure and it stinks really, really badly. But you know what? My plants are going to love me for it. But prior to adding it to your soil, it must be composted because fresh hot manure will burn your plants. Till your soil and remove any stones that you may find. should not be worked or ploughed when it's too wet. And because it rained last night, clearly I don't need this baby anymore. If your soil, like my clump of soil, does not crumble when you apply pressure to it, it means that it's too wet. So I think I'm going to have to wait another day. Because when it's wet, it will cake when it dries, and this really isn't good for our little plants. And if you're still not sure if your soil is dry enough for tilling, you can use a moisture level tester. Okay guys, I know that my soil is moist, but I'm going to test it just to show you. Okay, when it starts off, it's on one because it's pretty dry. So let's put it in the soil and see how wet our soil is. As you can see, on this side, it's dry and it's at one. And on the opposite side, after about six, seven, eight, it indicates that our soil is wet. And my arrow is on eight. So that means our soil is kind of wet. So I might have to wait a day or two to get it a bit dry so that I can till it. A great place to find organic matter is right here in your garden. Just look out for grass cuttings, leaves, flowers and any decaying matter. As you can see, since it's spring, I have a whole lot of petals lying around everywhere. And you know what? I'm actually quite grateful because I'm going to use it as part of my compost mix, which I'm going to add into my soil to make it nice and rich. Okay, you know what? This is not quite working out for me. Ugh. So 
so much hard work, but so much fun. <sighs> oh yes, the pleasures of having a fork. Different types of vegetables require varying degrees of soil acidity. The acidity or alkalinity is measured by pH, which must be adjusted according to which crop will occupy that area. Generally, soils in moist areas are acid and soils in dry regions are alkaline. A soil with a pH level lower than 7 is acid and with a pH level higher than 7 it's alkaline. Now if that theory is true, that means the soil in Joburg is alkaline. Now you can buy an inexpensive pH tester at your local nursery. Once you've done all your pH testing, you can amend your soil as needed. Cool, so our soil is alkaline. However, if you need to make your soil more acidic, you may need to add sulfur. And if you need to make it more alkaline, you may need to add lime. The amount of lime or sulfur that you may need to add will depend on the change that you need to make. Over here, I've got some lime, and I will use it to mix into my soil to make it more alkaline. And if my soil needs to be more acidic, I'll add some river sand mixed with sulfur. This is really, really simple. All you need to know is the difference between alkaline and acid. Cool guys, as you can see, preparing soil takes a lot of hard work, but can be so much fun. Just don't be afraid of getting dirty. <laughs> That's right guys, preparing your soil is a vital part of food gardening. After the break, we go check out what the experts have to say. So, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Grow Your Own. This episode is about soil and soil preparation. Before the break, we showed you guys how to add nutrients and prepare your grain beds for planting. But we thought it would be a great idea to get some tips from the experts just to see how the pros do it. Check this out. Hola, my friends. Glad to see that you're still glued to your TV. Now, we're here at the Sia Kana Food Garden Project in Bays Valley in Jersey. Now friends, these people know all the secrets to having healthy soil that is rich in organic nutrients. So come with me and let's go find out all the tricks of the trade. Hi guys, now I'm here with Mandla and he's going to tell us about how we heal the soil. Okay Mandla, now you guys make use of certain herbs that condition the soil with their root systems. Now can you tell me and show me how these herbs condition the soil? To condition the soil, uh, there are a couple of herbs and uh, legumes. The legumes are in the range of pumpkin, uh, maize, and sunflowers. They condition the soil. Now, these beans is one of the, re the, the goodness of it, as we had um, said before, is to fix the soil. They add uh, goodness and value to the soil. And also a plant or a herb, that one there with yellow flowers, it's called mullein. Mullein is a uh, a soil uh, feeder and it gives nutrition too. And also the other one is um, comfrey. Uh, comfrey, unfortunately, in this vicinity you cannot see it well, but it's that one with green leaves, green huge leaves. So comfrey it brings nourishment to the soil and also uh, fertility at the same time. What exactly is the purpose of a compost heap? It's a recycling of weeds. As we have a garden, we will have plants that grow. Weeds are those plants which we don't use, which are growing in a place where we did not plan for them to be. And now the compost heap works in this sense. We take these weeds as we cultivate the soil, place them there for a certain period of time, and it, after some time, it decomposes. 
and it becomes soil again. So we feed it back to the garden. Okay, Mandla, so now I've heard that mulch is very good for the soil. Now what is mulch and what exactly does it do? Mulch is an organic material that is part of nature, as in leaves, dry grass, uh, wood chips. These are the three types of mulch. Now, um, the use of mulch is as a ground cover. We have also green mulches. Those are plants that are planted to cover the soil meanwhile and feed it. Uh, like the bean, it is a mulch itself, if you know how to use it. And uh, the purpose of the mulch per se is to enrich the soil, to cover it from the moisture from drying up uh, from the sun. You see now as it's hot, uh, we sweat. And the same thing with the soil, it loses moisture. Now the covering of the ground with these mulches is to uh, prevent uh, soil um, uh, evaporation of water and also to suppress other weeds uh, and also to enrich the soil. So now, are there any organic fertilizers like cow manure that you add to your soil? Yes, yes, yeah, cow manure, uh, horse manure are uh, good organic waste material. It's, we, we, it's a biomass, it's a, a byproduct of nature. Now, do any of our plants actually like poor quality soil? They are, uh, let's take rosemary for one. Mm -hmm. Rosemary thrives in poor soil. Rosemary does not require any composting, any soil care. These are called pioneer plants like a bean. A bean thrives in any soil. So now how important are earthworms in improving soil quality? Those are so, so important in this manner that they are the ones that eat up the foliage, that is the leaves, uh, any kind of mulch you may have in there, and the castings, those tools, in, in this sense of the earthworms, they become food for the soil. So now how do you prevent soil erosion? Soil erosion, it comes in a multiple of ways. Through rain, water as it flows, we would see that there's a drainage which the water follows. And we make plots in such a way, it, hence we harvest water with the system of our plot making. The other one is through wind erosion. Winds come, they blow the topsoil away. Now mulching, as we cover the soil with wood chip, with uh, mulches, different type of mulches, we are actually keeping the erosion um, fixed here. Yeah. Guys, look at how amazing this garden is. Wood chips for some ground covering. There are actually uh, many different ways of making a compost here. You can make one even on an open space. And you put a stick in between your compost and you, you turn it once in a while. It, it aerates, the air come in, comes in and it gives that life which is needed. Then eventually it becomes soil again. Let's say if it were completely full, like you see at this stage is this much. By next week, this compost heap will have gone a little bit lower. So we add more and more and more and then cover. And at times you change it. You change the compost, you take out the bottom part, it goes to the upper side and it cooks. Yeah. Now the idea is to keep this area closed whenever we can so that it heats up inside. And all the microorganisms thrive in such areas. This one, this process is so good and neat in the sense you don't get flies all over. Uh, you, 
are actually having a place well organized. Wow, friends, that was so inspiring. Just like us, the soil also needs some TLC. We've learned that there are so many ways in which we can heal the soil. And remember, friends, poor quality soil can result in poor quality vegetables. So get out there and get composting. And yes, friends, Mother Nature also needs some nurturing and some soul food. That was really interesting. If you're working on your own garden at home, it's a great idea to take notes and keep a diary of all these little interesting facts and ideas. If you don't have a diary, you'll want to take note of what's coming up next after the break. Because the guys at Siakana show us how solar technology has helped improve their efficiency and save them a whole lot of energy. So, don't go anywhere. Hi and welcome back. Solar technology is a great way to utilize the sun's free energy. But how do we utilize it? Well, let's head back to Siakana to find out how. Energy and green living is a great topic these days, but why wouldn't it be? Our planet is under a lot of stress, and this is because of global warming and the destruction of natural habitat. However, current thinkers today do realize that we have a great responsibility in giving back positively to our planet. This can be done by cutting down waste production and the use of electricity. Now don't panic friends, because I know that we all rely on coal-based electricity. Yes, my friends, electricity is something that we take for granted just because it's always there and it's so unlimited. So we're here today at the Sia Kanyap Group Project to find out how they incorporate all of this. So come with me and let's go hear what they have to say. Okay, Eco Warriors, so we're here with Tabisile Mabuze and she's going to tell us how this food garden initiative runs on solar power. So Tabi, what exactly is solar energy? Solar energy is the light, it's the sun. The benefit is that you don't have to pay, it's not expensive, yeah. it's usable, it's okay. user friendly. So now what are the solar technologies that you guys are utilizing on these premises? We are utilizing the solar panel which is there in the house. We use the battery and the solar panel, the panel that is on the roof. Now, why did you guys choose to use solar energy um, instead of the usual traditional forms of electricity? You don't have to pay okay. any money and also it doesn't go off, it's always there. So now how many solar panels do you guys actually have? So far we have one. So now, Tabi, how many hours of sunlight do solar panels require to generate solar power? There's no time for it exactly because it yeah. goes on the whole, throughout the whole night, so we don't lose it exactly. Now, can my viewers at home and myself power any kind of technology using solar batteries and powers? Mm -hmm. You can, okay. you can. So now, are there any limitations in using solar energy? There are no limits. There are no limits. Uh, um, but except when there is too much rain. You see, if it's been raining the whole week, then it becomes a problem. So now what happens if it's cloudy? Can you guys still utilize your solar power? Well, they, it all depends on the light that we get. Okay. So if the air, if there's too much cloud, uh -huh. then it becomes a, a problem. Okay. But it also works during winter time. Okay. But the one that is outside there depends too much on the sun so you can't do anything without it if there's no sun whereby the one I'm using in the house the one that works with the battery as well it only depends on the light and if there's too much sun then the better it will carry us through at least for the whole week so it just draws in the heat now I hear that you guys use portable solar batteries and chargers to power your building. Now exactly how do you guys do this? It's all through the sun. Yeah. Yeah, it, they, they just, we just need to put them 
where they would face the sun and then they throw the heat inside. So now, am I correct in assuming that you guys don't have any electricity bills at the end of the month? No, no, <laughs> we don't. Would you rather prefer using solar power as opposed to the traditional use of electricity? Yes, I would definitely go for solar power. It's the best. Now, do you guys have any solar lights? And if you don't mind, could you please show us? Yes, we do, outside. We place them outside. Okay, friends, so here's an example of a pretty cool-looking solar light. Okay, friends, so over here I have a solar battery charger. Now, it's really great because you can change the port according to any gadget that you have or your cell phone type. And there you go, friends. My cell phone is charging from my solar charger. Wow, it seems like utilizing solar power is absolutely amazing because it's both viable and it's economical. And for me, as an eco-conscious warrior, I think the solution is absolutely perfect. And for those of you that are freaking out, don't worry guys, solar power is totally portable, so you guys can still use your trendy gadgets. So a piece of advice from me to you is to start converting to using solar power, just like these guys at Siakana Project have. That was really great stuff. In the next week's episode, we heat things up by choosing what to plant. There are literally thousands of different types of vegetables out there, both indigenous and common exotics. But if you've only got three square meters to plant, what exactly can you plant? We also speak to established fruit growers to see what they chose to plant. And we get to play with some earthworms. Remember, if you guys have any info or are working on projects that you'd like to share, you can send us an email at infogyo at in.com. That's infogyo at in.com. Wow, all this work has really made me hungry. So I'm off to grab a bite to eat. Until next time, bye. Take the dog that's got the bone. Take the dog that's got the bone. Take the dog that's got the bone.